The next question uh, is after a blueprint or your view of a blueprint for living. Uh, he says, um, who in your opinion will finally bring forward a real blueprint for living our lives so that we feel safer, happier, more fulfilled? It won't be the politicians, will it? No, I think one of the most interesting things that's happened over the last 30 years has been that we have understood a huge amount more about who we are, how we work as human beings. And I think that just as over the last 30 years, policymakers have tended to think that the way to enhance human creativity and progress has been to design perfect markets, I think in the future, the next generation, what we'll be thinking is, is, is what, how can we use what we know now about how the mind works, how the brain works to enhance well-being and creativity. And I think there are certain key insights coming out of all of that literature. So if I gave you one example, we have a tendency to think that our personality is a kind of fixed quantity, that we are a particular kind of person. And we also have a tendency to think that that which will make us happy is always a thing just out of reach. If only I had a new car, if only I had a, a different relationship, if only I had a bigger house. Now these things are both untrue. Our personality is much, much more determined by the circumstances in which we are placed. You know, if you put me or you in an environment where we were encouraged to behave sadistically and a culture which was sadistic, then sooner or later, very soon, in fact, all the evidence shows, we would find our inner sadist. And then where would our be our personalities? On the other hand, we know that people get very little contentment from buying the next car and the next iPhone and whatever it is. They just adjust and they want something else. The things that give us satisfaction are much more fixed. They are things like what social psychologists call flow, that sense of doing something and losing yourself in it. The feeling that you get if you're a gardener or if you're cooking a meal or if you're playing sport at just the right level. So imagine the implications for us as a human race if we understood those things. If we understood that to make ourselves flourish we should attend to the social context in which we operate. To make anybody flourish, we should attend to the social context. So if we have a nice society, we will be nice. And if at the same time we understood that the pursuit of ever greater wealth and affluence and consumerism did nothing to enhance our well-being, and that in fact the things that make us happy, good friendships, activities which we feel that, we're, you know, that, 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 that we get completely into, um, uh, relaxing, you, know, you don't need money for these things. You can do these things without damaging the planet. So, the work that's been undertaken over the last 30 years from neuroscientists, behavioural economists, social psychologists, which, which challenge the idea that we are perfectly rational utility maximisers in a perfect marketplace, I think that knowledge is now starting to spread into broader society and I think it could have big implications. It won't produce a blueprint for living, but it will challenge the assumptions of the last 30 years which contributed to behaviour which led to the credit crunch.